Social Strategy Podcast, episode number 60. We're 60 episodes in. This is getting pretty serious. Welcome to the Social Strategy Podcast, where it's all about making the most of your business with smart tips on what's working now in social media, online business, and good old-fashioned networking. And now your host, who's also known as Ross PR on Twitter, Vernon Ross. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. This is your host, Vernon Ross, and this is the Social Strategy Podcast. I'm so happy this is episode number 60. I finally got a fitness person. I've been trying to get a really good example of someone that's building a business in the fitness industry, and they're not just a fitness model. Nothing against fitness models, but that is so prevalent right now on the internet that I wanted to get someone that is building a real business with multiple streams of income and actually a business plan other than just, you know, posing with different supplements. This is not that, but this is a really good episode and I'm really excited to get into it as a fellow podcaster, a good friend. And I know that you guys are going to pick up a ton of knowledge. We even said a couple things that were very, very tweetable. I'll wait until you hear it in the episode because there was some good stuff in here. Definitely guys, make sure to keep emailing me, Vernon at VernonRoss.com. I love your feedback. It is so valuable. Also, there is a new site called Blab. I don't know if you guys are on Blab yet. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with it, but I'll talk about that also at the end of the show. So definitely make sure to tune in until the end. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and get the episode started, and I will see you on the back end. Hey, everyone, this is Vernon Ross, and welcome to the Social Strategy Podcast, bringing you the best in online business, social media, good old-fashioned networking. And I don't know for the life of me why I do that twice. Somebody pointed it out to me last week that, you know, you do your intro twice. You do it at the beginning, and then you turn around and you do it when you bring your guest on. I'm like, oh, you know what? You're right. So maybe we'll cut this out. Maybe we won't. Oh. <laughs> I'll probably leave it in, and, and then next episode we'll cut it out. But today i got a really good friend of mine, great guest. I have not had a chance to talk to him, and it seems like, almost a year. I know I say good friend, but you know, sometimes when you meet people at a podcast event, you hit it off with them and you're just friends from there out, no matter how often you talk to each other. And I see him online. I've got Greg Zafalato from Too Busy to Eat. He has a book out called I Believe Weight Lost. It was his first foray into publishing, did pretty well. He also has the Too Busy to Eat podcast, Too Busy to Eat programs. He's launching a fitness weight loss or a food replacement bar or supplement company or food company. I'm not sure we'll figure that all out. And a corporate athlete wellness program. So there's a lot of stuff that Greg has going on. He's going to catch us up on all of it. Welcome to the show, man. Thanks, Vernon. This is great. I'm glad to be able to catch up. We touched space a little bit between the year from last podcast movement to now, but not a ton. So this has been good. It's real good. Yeah, I missed your yeah. podcast movement, man. I was I know. Be there. I was so bummed. Launching that new BizFit, we had a number of meetings all lined up right around there, and I knew I couldn't slip out because I didn't really know when they were going to happen. And then, so, but next year, next year I'm back. Well, awesome. Sure. It'll be in Chicago, so it's, it's a lot Oh, clo- awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a lot closer yeah. to me, not that close to you. <laughs> oh, I love Chicago. Well, I'm in Dallas is fine, but I love Chicago. That's great. All right. Yeah, yeah that's good for you. Yeah, you're real close. Oh, yeah, it should be fun. So you've been a little absent from podcasting for a little bit, and I noticed that it was very cool that I got an email from you about your webinar that was coming up. By the way, how did your webinar do? Oh, it was great. You know, I've been doing them on and off the last couple years, you know, I'm still tweaking on how best to promote it, to get it out there. Advertising, social media, obviously, is always a big part of it, getting out there, communicating with people. But this is the first year I like, reached out to you and a few other people. It's kind of trying to uh, more network and share people that I know and I'm, you know, I have a relationship with and kind of share it through them for them to share with others. And I enjoyed that part. It was successful, but I enjoyed the interaction with all the people that I haven't touched base with, like you and Harry, and there's a number of guys and gals that I connected with. It's been a while, so I like the networking part of promoting the webinar more than anything. Right. That's always fun. Anytime you get a chance to promote and do fun stuff with people that you like, that part of it is good. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, to catch us up on what you do and talk a little bit more about your business, because I think you have a really interesting story about how you got into the whole fitness thing, because I know a lot of fitness people. And for whatever reason, there are a lot of fitness people that follow me on Instagram now 
Mm. So I've always wondered when you get into the fitness business from the standpoint that you do, because you're not just like a weight loss diet guy. You're like the overall all around fitness and your approach is a little bit different. So tell us a little bit about like, how did you get into this? Yeah. Well, it's been a passion since I can remember uh, nutrition and fitness. I mean, I can remember when I was a kid uh, studying, reading anything I could. And then that was a part of really my DNA. And then I did different things for a living. You know, I taught and coached high school and college basketball. And so I did a lot of different things there. But what got me really invested in nutrition and exercise was my own struggle with weight because I was a real lean basketball player. And then I finished playing college basketball and the intake stayed the same and the exercise <laughs> dropped. <laughs> right. And I found myself a couple years in almost 70 pounds heavier than when I was in college. So, you know, I just ballooned up and got real unhealthy. And so I said, it was like kind of a lengthy journey, but I learned so much during it and was always kind of known as the guy that, you know, because I lost all this weight and then I kept it off and then I kind of refined it and I was helping people along the way. Right. And so over the years, it was really a nonstop. My background for teaching was physics and chemistry. So the science part of it, like the research, I've always read all the research on diet and nutrition and exercise. And that's been fascinating for me. So it was a natural fit a few years ago when the funny story is I was actually coaching somebody. I was helping them through. It was kind of a life coaching situation. Mm -hmm. And he kind of flipped the table on me and, and he kind of challenged me to do something. You know, he said, you tell me to take risk. You tell me to do this and this with my career. I said, what about you? And it was really in a nice way. He said it. He said, why don't you do something with, and that's where I start putting the things together, being more purposeful about nutrition and fitness. And then I had started a business before with training athletes. And so all that kind of wrapped together. And I started putting together my thoughts. Those thoughts came out to that, my first book. And then the book launched Too Busy to Eat the Business. So that's okay. kind of the right. summary of this. Yeah. That's interesting. So you got basically challenged by somebody you were coaching to say, hey, yeah. <laughs> you know, you're telling me to take all these risks. I don't see you doing it yourself. Yeah, I'm holding back. I was playing it pretty safe. You know, I was in a position, a job, what I was doing, I wasn't really fulfilled at the time. And he knew it. And uh, he was a good friend, but I had some coaching background and my master's degree. And so I was helping him. And, and yeah, it was great. And it, it pushed me. Personally, I the last several years and you know, getting out and running your own business and starting a couple of different businesses, it pushed me harder than I ever imagined. Like working longer, working harder, but it's been more fulfilling than I ever imagined also. So both sides of it. Right. When I look at your background, it's a little different, of course, you know, being an athlete it's just seems natural that you would go into something that you know, or end up in something that was fitness related. Where you're helping people because most athletes, after they are not actively in their sport, they usually either end up broadcasting or, you know, doing some type of coaching where they're helping right. kids or college students or professional athletes or something like that. But with your career and the path that you took, your master's degree, it's not the typical master's degree. It's not a VA and something. <laughs> yeah, no. You've got a religious training background. Right, you're, right. you're a pastor, right? I was, yeah. I was for several years, five years, actually. And it was a fantastic experience, and I learned a ton. And what I, one of the things that I really learned a lot about is people, you know, because that's what, being a pastor, you just, you're working with people, helping people. But my master's in leadership and trying to organize people and help people move them along, you know, in small groups and large groups. That master's degree was very helpful during that time because you kind of find yourself... I used the coaching background was helpful, but right. I got myself in a position where I'm overseeing large groups of people and I'm like, what do I do with all these people? And so that degree, that was good. It was helpful. All right. Now, that's a really interesting place to be. How did your interest turn from being a pastor to starting your own business and getting away from that? You know, it's funny because when I was putting together my thoughts and getting a direction and actually putting my thoughts together in this book I'm working on now, Too Busy to Eat, I started looking at the thread of all the things I've done. And basically, the only thing I found I'm good at is, and I don't mean to sound like that I'm some great person or whatever, but it was, is helping people. I mean, everything I've done, like whether it's teaching as a pastor, was helping people get fit or lose weight, eat right. And I know in most professions, in some way, you're helping people in some way. But 
it's that direct connection to somebody like and seeing somebody change that really, I guess that's what fulfills me. So like when I was teaching and coaching, it was seeing young people, you know, get it and figure out whether it's science or basketball or life skills, you know, and then as a pastor, it was, you know, helping people work through issues and work through their faith and connect to God in a deeper way. And you can see it. I mean, it happens. And then with fitness and nutrition, you really see the physical change in their body and then, you know, the change in their attitude because the change in their energy, all this affects their whole life. It's a weird smorgasbord of things, <laughs> yeah. but finally realized that one thread was just, I find fulfillment when I can see people change through a process. They're all connected somehow. Right. No, and I think it really is in fitness and diet. There's so much stuff that you have to sacrifice. Yeah. And, you know, I guess coming from a pastoral background, you understand, hey, these are the things you have to sacrifice and replace things with. And this is how you can really be committed to these goals of losing weight or in these right, goals right. of getting in shape. It's just a very interesting way to come to fitness because not most people I know that are in fitness, they're really not. <laughs> They've never, uh-huh. I've never talked to anybody that's had a background in any type of religious discipline right, at right. all, and let alone a master's in ministry and leadership. So I right. just think it's an interesting way to come to it. So getting back to how you build your business, you've got some interesting things going on. You've got a health food product coming out. Yes. So I wanted to do something like this for a number of years, basically early on in my company. And I first was thinking about a protein powder and then it kind of developed and I was doing research and I realized that how I could help people the most because of the way my program works and how I personally survive. And it was to create the healthiest, easiest, natural food bar that I could create. So I had a line of too busy to eat bars coming out. And, you know, I work a lot with busy moms. I mean, that's been a thread too through my program. 75% of the people in my program are moms that are trying to reclaim the weight, their body before they had kids. And sometimes it's two months after, sometimes it's 10, 15 years after kids. For women, that is the turning point for them kind of losing their body that they once had. And so I created a bar for anybody, but it's really geared towards that extremely healthy bar that a mom could have, could feed their kids, and they'll like it. It's great for the mom, and it's healthy enough that they don't have to feel guilty giving it to the kids because it's healthy as it can be. So it's all organic. The protein bar is one protein bar and two superfood bars. Protein bar is a grass-fed whey protein. It's the highest quality protein on the market. And then the superfood bars are vegan. And I just really went all out to make the best bar I could make. And now, you know, I wanted to be able to feed my kids it too when they're on the run or, you know, get a snack. And so that was my goal. And I wanted to create this. And then I just started researching and coming up with different formulas. And I found a great company to help me produce it. And then we're off and running now. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So I'm sure people are going to be like, well, wait, wow, you just created a protein bar and superfood bars. How do you go about doing that? What's the research that you have to do? How expensive is it? What does it take to do something like that? Yeah, it takes a lot of research. There's a lot of companies out there that manufacture food. Like You'd actually be surprised. The funny thing, like the protein powder that we eat, you know, you could go to the store and let's say, I'm going to throw this out. This is not exact, but it's going to be somewhat close. So let's say there's 40 different protein powders on a shelf. Mm-hmm. It's probably been manufactured at like four different locations. It's just rebranded different ways. And so people will tweak. I'm not saying they're all the same. Mm-hmm. I'm saying companies have found the need like any other business. They found a need that people want to make protein powders, want to make this special formula. They want to do this. Well, you know, setting that up and doing that completely on your own is really unrealistic for most people. So there's companies that specialize in producing food. And so they have FDA approval. Now you work with their chemists and you work with their basically food team and you help create. So they help you create your bar and then they do the manufacturing part and they handle that FDA approval, all the different gluten-free and organic and all that part is handled by them. Oh, wow. So my research was finding the right food manufacturer that will create the bar I want. Mm-hmm. So it took a while. 
took into some negotiation. I have a silent partner right now. He's a full time in a business that he feels like he needs to um, keep it under wraps for right now. But he used to be in the supplement industry for a while, and and he really knows everybody in the supplement industry. And we were able to interview and talk to people that have actually just started their own lines of bars and just get a great insight on what makes a good bar, what the need out there and, you know, what companies are trustworthy, what manufacturers do the best job. And so that's kind of the process. Wow. That is interesting. I've never heard anybody talk about, you know, how you get something like that done. Just from a, uh, I guess, a round numbers perspective, if I wanted to go out and I wanted to create a protein bar or not even necessarily a protein bar, but maybe a natural food protein. I can't remember the brand. There's some brand out there that I've had before where it's some type of, it's either beef or turkey or bison. Yeah. And I wanted to put all of that in a bar. What kind of money am I looking at? Am I looking at $100,000 to start and get a product run out there and test it? Or am I looking at a lot less than that? You know, a lot less than that now because, well, it depends on how you want to do it. We decided to go a very slow launch, very keep it in-house, meaning that we're not meeting with Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and all these health food right away. We're going to launch the bar for my clients. And so the production side of that was we're not making 50,000 bars and selling them all over the country. We're starting very slow. So, you know, you're looking at more about $10,000 or so maybe to get everything launched and maybe even less, you know, depending on how much you want to produce. Now, what it is, is we have really small launch and as soon as those bars start going, then we order, they've set it up so easy for us, meaning that we have like a two week turnaround. So when our inventory hits a certain spot, we just or the next round and ship it to us. And then we hand all the shipping and getting it to our customers on time. That's so, awesome. Are you doing your fulfillment through Amazon or are you doing it just personally no, handling it? My business partner's handling it and he's going to do it personally, obviously with some help, mm-hmm. but he's doing it because we decided we wanted to control it definitely early on. We wanted to make sure that every order is personalized, like, personalized note. Um, We wanted to make sure it was right. We wanted to throw in some free samples every time somebody ordered, especially early on. And so that part is we couldn't figure out how to keep that personal touch and have somebody else do it. So we're just going to we're going to wing it. We're going to see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's interesting. And the bar is basically called Too Busy to Eat Bar, right? Yes. Yeah. And the, our website for ordering and everything is tbtebar.com. So tbtebar.com. But it's on my website, too. But, yeah, it is a Too Busy to Eat Bar, but the labeling is my uh, logo and everything is TBTE. So, well, very cool. yeah, I'll, so I'll make sure to link that up in the show notes so people can check it out. And of course, your website is going to be there as well. But that's, right. I think it's really interesting because I would have thought six figures easy to right, right. create a food bar, get it out there <laughs> and start yeah. working towards it. But not yeah. really. That's the interesting thing. We may have to dig more into that as, yeah. as the launch goes and things get, sure. get going. Yeah. Exactly. You know, how does it go? What do you yeah. do? How do you? <laughs> How do you sell it and all the other stuff? But you've got some really other interesting things that are going on that I think from a speaker's perspective and people that want to really get out there. When we first talked, I mean, like when we first met, we were talking about some of the stuff you were doing. And after you had worked with Chris Cerrone from Cerrone Show, you know, for the benefit of everybody, when we say Chris, that's who we're talking about. (laughs) Chris Cerrone, you would go speak and you were promoting your current book. And then go into all, I guess, different corporate locations and stuff like that. How are you going about that? Because one of the questions that I get, and it's something I've been able to kind of overcome, but just coming from, I guess, uh, my advice perspective, I'd love to get somebody else that goes around and actually does things like this. How do you find the places that you want to go? Right. To actually yeah. pitch business and pitch, hey, I want to come talk to you guys about wellness. And, oh, by the way, it'd be nice if you could pay for my travel there. Or uh, how do you go about that? What's your process? Well, a lot of it is, like, it's different for different things I'm speaking about. But let's stick to I'm too busy to eat is I was able to help a lot of women early on. So that niche of helping women, like I did do a lot of things with educators. So I did a lot of things with, and I had a teaching background. So those combinations where you got in teaching, you got a high percentage of women, most of them moms, 
and that's who my clients are. So where do they hang out? Where do they connect? So that process of speaking is where I went there. And over the last year, that's really been growing. I have an entire educators program going now in 2 Eat where I go into schools. Right now it's California, but I've done some programs in my new area, Santa Barbara. I'm branching out to other districts where I go in and I speak to teachers and get programs going there. So that's how I figure that out. Now, on my corporate wellness side, the corporate athlete side, is we determined through all types of interaction what kind of company fits our business best. Mm -hmm. And it's really kind of a more of a high tech tech company that has a younger demographic. That's why we call it a corporate athlete program and not so much the traditional old school company. It's more of a upcoming company. Not that everybody in the company has to be young. It's more of that new startup company. So we go out and we meet them. We'll go in and present to them. We'll help them in any way. And we want to get there. You know, we want to eventually sign them to a contract where we help their whole company for years to come by being a present there by physically with physical fitness, my nutrition side. And then one of my partners is doctor of physical therapy. So with that, the whole medical side, having a doctor to physical therapy opens up the whole medical side where it's really, we can really help companies with not just physical therapy, but with medical screenings and a lot of other things. Oh, wow. So I guess it depends. So I guess a long story to say it depends on what aspect of business I'm trying to focus on. Mm -hmm. But I love speaking to people. And when you're in front of people, it's so powerful. So in any way to get in front of them is a win. I mean, whether it's a group of teachers or if it's an entire, you know, large congregation for a large company. Right. So it's an opportunity to share your information and reach a large group at one time. Yeah, when I talk to people about the whole speaking thing and going into companies and doing stuff like that, the first question I get is, well, how do you get in there? Yeah. So you, I'm going to ask you that. So how do you get in there? Persistence. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I remembered the CEO that said this, but there was a CEO I was listening Gosh, I was reading a book. I think Darren Hardy's book. It oh, might have yeah. been Darren Hardy, Compound Effect. Great book, by the way. It's an eye-opener for me. I've read it a couple times already, and it's just very powerful. So Darren Hardy, in his book, he talks about, I think it was this book. Now, I read a lot of his stuff. The CEO said, until I get the fifth email from one person, I don't even think about responding. So I'm like, wow. So he will get five emails from the same person before he responds. So when I want to get into a company, when I want to get into a school, I'm not going to email them every day. I'm not going to call them every day. But I set up a spreadsheet when I contacted them. I kind of have an idea, depending on the circumstance, how often I want to contact them. And I just don't give up. I just keep emailing. If it's the right circumstance, I'll call and just leave a message and just keep reaching out to them until you get some type of response. Eventually, to be honest, they respond because they're, you know, they're tired of hearing from you or whatever. So <laughs> they'll either ask you to come and meet with them or they'll say, leave me alone. And to be honest, I've never had anybody say, just say, I've had people say, I'm not interested at the time, but they won't say, hey, you're bugging me. They know they haven't responded. And if they respond early, they would have been, I would have got off their back right away. So I guess persistence, just well, keep at it. It's not magical. It's just, right. just keep, keep reaching out to them. And anybody's emails, you can figure it out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Pretty much, right? You, you just keep trying different. And for the HR directors, for our part, is for the corporate wellness side is who we contact. And then administrators in the teaching realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's funny that you say that because I do the same exact thing. I'm like, okay, I found out the person I need to talk to. Yeah. They're uh, not very active on LinkedIn. They may have a LinkedIn profile. It, it gets right. me to, I'm like, okay, I know their first name or last name, their middle initial. Let me just start trying combinations of yeah, emails yeah. until I right, get them. Right, right, right. Yes, it, yeah. You, you'll get those bounce backs sometimes, and right, sometimes right. you'll get through, and they're like, okay, sure, you can come talk to us. Now, do you do any motivational-type speeches about health and wellness, or is it more so you guys are going in there presenting your programs and selling? Well, it depends. We do some motivational things when once we're in locked in with a company, mm -hmm. that's part of the whole package. But most of it's informational at the beginning stages. You know, it's really right. in, you know, informational, giving them tools, tips, helping them get on track the easiest way we can, you know, and simple, simple steps for them to do. But the heart of my first book was I believe weight loss was really the category of that is a motivational weight loss. It's like, I know it's not complete. The biggest hurdle is motivation. 
so many different programs work if you can stay on them. So, <laughs> right. Yeah. So motivational, that part is huge, but for talking to people, it's usually informational. Right. Now, when I talk to somebody like you and I talk to a lot of people like you and I, you're on the show, the first question I usually get an email is and feedback is, well, I want to do a program, but I think the word program scares people. Right. right, right. Like, I don't know how to organize it. I don't know how to put my thoughts down on paper and get everything out. And then how do I price it? And how many things do I put in? And if I don't make it, you know, this huge novel, is it too short or now is it too long? And how do you start to develop, you know, an actual just like corporate wellness program? Just a brief overview of what your process is. Yeah. So. I use the corporate wellness program. That part, so there's two different. So the, the BizFit, the corporate athlete program, that was a lot of research of finding out what else is out there, what they provide, and how much they charge. So that was more clean cut. We were able to know that most wellness programs are very minimal. They're not physical presence. There's mostly kind of, it's like an online, maybe a fitness class here or there, but a lot of it's kind of online. And we wanted to be different. We wanted to be present. So we knew that our cost would be higher so that we kind of did that. And as we meet with people and they look at the cost and they're not turned away, we're like, okay, we're right on. Now for my nutrition programs, that has been an evolving thing where, you know, I started in one direction and I went another direction and that's just been really trial and error in the sense that, you know, some things worked right away, some things didn't, and I keep tweaking it to make it more and more effective in helping people. And so, you know, I started with kind of like a little membership thing, low entry point, trying to get a lot of people involved and people weren't seeing change because there was no buy in. So then I went a really high end, you know, really expensive program and I had some massive changes and it was really high touch for me on my side. But then I realized that it was limiting in some sense. So now, now I landed in between. So really for too busy, it was a trial and error and I went from one extreme to the other, and then I landed right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> and, it took, and it took a couple of years, so it wasn't. But during, during the whole process, the, people have testimonials rolling in through all the programs, but I'm trying to refine it and make it the most effective. Right. Now, what's been your most effective way to market your program? Has it been webinar, social, or email? Yeah, that's good. Really, my whole business has been through social media. I mean, I've done, and actually that's how it started. So I got through social media, getting it out there through mainly Facebook and Twitter. I got, you know, traction and got people talking and through, you know, my blog podcast, got interacting with people. Then word of mouth, after people have success, I've had a lot of referrals. So, you know, after that initial push, a lot of my work has been referrals, which is great. Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. Now, do you have a referral program that you have or it's just been because people have been happy with your work? Yeah, I set a referral program up and established that, but it's a little clunky. So it's been mostly people say, hey, how did you lose the weight? And they tell me, they just send. And I find out down the road that Susie sent Jane to my program and I didn't even know from the start, but you, know, you find it out as you interact with them. And then they interact. You can see because I have a private community online, Facebook community, that mm -hmm. all my crew kind of interact with each other. And so you kind of see that they're friends and you kind of do it together. Hey, they referred. Yeah. So, but it's social media is my main go. And I just did a webinar. For my area, I'm still not sold if webinar my webinar is going to work. That strategy is going to work. So I'm still up in the air. I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask. Yeah. Like, well, how did you do a webinar? Because, of course... You know, everybody's like, oh, webinar is the golden goose of mm -hmm. selling stuff and launching. You do a webinar and it's going to be successful. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like, well, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. So, you know, our world, the people that are building online businesses, like, yeah, it, the webinars were great to market to us because we're online all the time. We're on, we see everything, you know, my Facebook ads are all the same people. But it's all these different online programs, start a course, be a webinar master, you, right. do, you know, write a book. All these things keep coming through. But for my clientele, a webinar is kind of foreign. And so it's getting less foreign 
but it's new to the world. So a webinar for online business is not new to the world. It's not new to us. We've seen them. We've done them. I watch webinars all the time. I attend webinars all the time because I get to learn something from them. You know, I don't always buy the program because then I would be broke, but I glean what I can. But for somebody trying to lose, you know, baby weight, 15 pounds. So that's what I've been wrestling with. So I'm not sure. I throw a lot of money at my webinars and I mean, I get a return, but is there a better way to do it is what I'm working on now. It's refreshing to hear that because, you know, of course, everybody talks about, oh, well, you know, webinar, it's the answer to everything. And I don't know that it is for everyone. I mean, it's a way to introduce your program, but I think more for their Internet marketing space. Yes. I think that's where it is. It's is great. Yeah. yeah. You're not necessarily the Internet marketing space. No. And I do create Facebook ads. You can target to the right to the group that I service the most. And I don't know. I'm just not sold. And it, it could be I'm doing something wrong. But like I had two, the last two months, I had one each month. And there was success. I mean, I've had people sign up for the program. It's been good. But it's not the same for the amount of time and effort and money I put into it. Mm-hmm. The spike is not as big as you know, you'd know you expect. And so is there another way to do it? If I just continue to do my social media, my podcasts, I'm not throwing all this money into webinars, you know, is that just as good? And so we'll see. Yeah. You know, I think it is because, I mean, a webinar is great and, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's a very easy touch point to get a bunch of people if they're interested in, I guess, watching a presentation right. about right. what you do or a video about what you're doing. But I do think that Facebook can be a little bit more targeted. You'll have to spend some money on Facebook ads, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, your return is, I think, a little bit more predictable once you figure out you know, what your rhythm is on Facebook and your Facebook ads and what it actually takes to convert people sure, you know, from right, right. curious to committed. Right, right. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the, yeah. Uh, wow, that's tweetable. <laughs> Uh, that is good. Yeah. That was pretty good. I'm, Look to tweet that. Yeah, I'm going to have to pat myself fun. on the back for that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, that's one of the things is it's trying to get them from that curious, oh, I want to check out this brand or maybe this is interesting or, yeah, I do want to lose some weight and I am too busy to eat, which I think is one of the best weight loss brand names I've ever heard because <laughs> Thank you. I always am too busy to eat clean. I know. Yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, you know, I can stop at McDonald's or Arby's or one of those places and grab something. But usually, and I don't even eat McDonald's, but, you know, stopping at one of those places is what people do. But too busy to eat, and now there's a bar that you can just grab and take with you or order. That's awesome, man. I love the fact that you've got a lot of little things going on, and they're doing well, and that's a good thing. And it's fun. I mean, I keep adding little things here and there, and different things pop up, and it's been a blast. But, you know... And it just takes so much, that first push for anybody that's starting something. I mean, that first push is so hard. And another book that was really encouraging to me was, and it's along the lines of what I'm talking about, is it was 10X by Grant Cardone. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was early on. I read his book early on when I was launching my first business, the Too Busy to Eat. And he was saying, yeah, not only is it going to take 10 times the effort. And I thought, okay, well, I can do that. So it's going to take 10 times as long. I said, I don't want to do that. Right. You know, <laughs> right. I'll work hard, but I don't want to take longer. And so like with the bar and with my corporate wellness company, and you know, all the things, it's that you just got to stay with it and know it's not going to just happen overnight. Anything, you hear these success stories like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm making six figures in three months, whatever. But it's such a small, tiny sliver of reality. It doesn't happen very often or ever, you know, and it's really that consistent fight, you know, day after day, you know, you just got to keep going and, and know that it's going to be harder and take longer. But the rewards, you know, anything that would be so simple, it's just not rewarding. So this has been a great journey. I wouldn't change anything. Well, that's it. cool. That's, yeah. that's really yeah. cool. And it, it is the journey. That's the fun part. I mean, once you yeah. get there, that's fun, too. That's a lot of fun. Okay. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're making money and it's everything's good. But getting yeah. there, you learn so much about yourself and what you want to do. And that's been part of my journey is, you know, it's like, right. yeah, this is taking 10 times longer than I would have ever expected it to. And I haven't gone 100 percent full time yet. Right. So I right. can only imagine. And from people that I talk to, they're like, yeah, it's it's taken me a lot longer. And I know a couple of people that they launched and boom, they had a six figure business and that was enough to replace their income. But you know, what's funny is what do you think as we wrap it up about the six figure 
mark that everybody throws out there. Right, right, right. I don't know. I mean, it depends on a lot of things. Like when I live, I moved from, this is going to be funny, I guess, but weird, but I moved from Central California to Southern California uh, last year. And I live in Santa Barbara, California, which is one of the most expensive places to live. And yeah, a six figure doesn't even cut it. I mean, right. <laughs> I mean, it does. But in most parts of the country, that six figures is great. And I mean, I think what the real push should be is, you know, that it really depends and it depends on, you know, really a lifestyle. So I like financial freedom. I don't know how to put it, but time freedom, like those things. You know, I have a high expectations for my income, but more importantly to me is that financial freedom and freedom schedule that I have now because of putting these things together where I can be with whatever my kids are doing. I'm not going to miss it because I can schedule that. So those things are more important than six figures. But now, in Santa Barbara, it's going to take six figures plus to make that happen, and that just takes. <laughs> it just takes. That's why I've started two different companies, and I got another. I got all these projects going. But then, on the same sense, if once you get going and you have multiple streams of income, six figures isn't hard. It's not hard to all of a sudden it starts to snowball. You have income coming from this stream, then this stream, then this stream, and all of a sudden, wow! You know, I mean, my income every month is if you hit. Eight thousand, what eight eighty five hundred, a little over eight thousand dollars a month, and you're hitting that six figure mark. Right, exactly. A year, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it can happen. But I guess the whole point I'm making was really it's more about lifestyle. I mean, you're making six figures, but you're working seventy five, eighty hours a week, and you don't see your family, and you know it's not worth it. Right, right. I think that's the turning point for a lot of people or the tipping point for a lot of people is it's like, okay, it's really not that difficult to make that kind of money. You just have to decide that what you're doing is the way that you want to make that kind of money. Right, right. Absolutely. Yeah, because all too often we get in stuff and then it's not the way that we want to make it. Yeah. And you've sacrificed everything to get there. And then you're like, well, I have six figures, but I'm miserable. Right. Yeah. Which is funny. That actually kind of happened to me in my first business, the whole computer support thing and building computers for people and doing all that stuff. And it was like, you know, I'm a technology guy by trade. And now that I'm doing it, you know, you do it at work and then you do it at home and you get massive amount of burnout and one thing had to give. And so I just stopped. (laughs) and got away from that whole business altogether. I don't fix anybody's computers anymore. It's like, don't call me about that. Go to Geek Squad. That's what they're for. Yep, yep. You know, you got to do what your thing is. And it sounds like you found, you know, that thing that you're passionate about and not only passionate about, but really, really good at, which is helping people. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No, it's it's fun. I definitely enjoy it. I think that's another thing we didn't touch on, but that six figures, all those things fall into place if you can find something you're passionate about. And I'm sure you've said it before and people have heard it before. Having something you're passionate about, it cures a lot of ills. It cure, you know, makes it so you want to get up in the morning and get going and all those. It's really important. Right. Yeah. You know, it's like that for me with podcasting. It's like, you know, when I'm podcasting, I'm on this mic, when I'm editing, even though everybody hates editing, (laughs) when you listen back to a show and you're hearing the stuff that's going on and you know that it's going to help people in your audience and then you get good feedback about, hey, man, I really enjoy this show or, you know, what do you do for your sound? Every aspect of the show and you've got a smile on your face when you're doing it, it's what you need to do. Now all you have to do is figure out a way to make it make money and you're good. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> now I feel bad for having I have somebody else do my audio, but no. <laughs> yeah, no, no, Ooh, no, no, no. No, I'm just uh, kidding. No, no, and that's true. I mean, when I remember going, when I first launched my podcast, I did the audio and you really get deep into the show. I mean, you really get the nuts and bolts out. It is powerful. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, Greg, it's been a pleasure having you on, dude. I know I've, been, I've held you a little bit longer than we had scheduled, but uh, that's okay. it's been fun okay. learning so many aspects of your business because I think that you're not the traditional entrepreneur that goes out, they start one business and it's successful and they've got this great story. You've got one thing, but you have several aspects of right, that right. thing. You've got the book. You've got another book that you're coming out with. You've got a brand of food that's coming out. You've got a corporate athlete program now that you're developing and you're working with teachers and educate. It's a really interesting way that you've put and built everything around your business as one thing. And it's all related to fitness. Uh And so I think that's a good thing to see. 
Thank you. Yeah, no, it's a blast. I love it. And I do appreciate you having me on the show. It's been awesome catching up. Oh, yeah, and, definitely. Uh, we we got to make it not as long next time. Right. Tell me about it. So what's the best place for people to find you online? Yeah, too busy to dot com. It's T O O B U S Y T O E A T dot com. Yeah, too busy to eat. Right. Um, I'm going to, of course, have that in the show notes. Yes. And I could not believe that I was not following you on Instagram. <laughs> I was like, I haven't seen his Instagram. And I'm like, oh, maybe that's because I'm not following him. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely check him out everywhere. What's your best social network? Where are you most active? Uh, Facebook and Twitter. So, mm-hmm. you know, my Facebook group, I'm too busy to eat the group. I'm real active in that. And Twitter. Those are my two main ones. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. I just sent out an Instagram with you. Oh, good. Definitely. I'll check it out. Yeah. Yeah. I copied you in on it and posted it. In. Quite a few people are liking it. And hopefully uh, some people will check out Too Busy to Eat from there and you'll get some more people following your stuff because I think it's good. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, guys, that was a pretty amazing episode. Like I said, Greg delivered on all of the information. I've been wanting for so long to talk to someone in the fitness industry to learn how they do it. And, I, you know, working in a gym years ago, I understood that part of it. And I was a certified personal trainer for quite a while, but never really got into the the full business side of it. I worked for Bally's, so I was a personal trainer for Bally's and went through their certification program which was great, but it really was not running your own business. This is, you know, corporate training, providing solutions for companies on how their employees can eat healthy and be healthy. It's it's an amazing deal that Greg has put together. And, I mean, there's just so many aspects to it. Talking about the nutrition bars and the fact that it was nowhere near as expensive as we would think that it would be, to get that going in a business. I thought it would be crazy expensive, a hundred thousand dollars at least. And it was nowhere near that. If you, if you miss that, go back and listen to it. But with saying that my VA, the girl that does the show notes, it goes through and she picks out the, the important stuff because it just saves me so much time. She's done an amazing thing by adding timestamps to the actual show notes. So, When you guys go through and you look at the show notes, please go to the show notes. Take a look. There's timestamps. But not only are there timestamps, the timestamps, amazingly enough, they actually have a clickable link where you can jump right to that space in the interview. So if if something catches your eye in the show notes, you just click on on the link. It's blue. It's got the time. It'll jump like right to 36 minutes and you can listen to, you know, how Greg explains, you know, when to use, you know, motivation and when to use information. And it was, that was just, that was an amazing on tweetable. So definitely listen at minute 36 into the interview. You can just click on the site in the show notes. I'm so, so excited about that because I, yeah, I wasn't going to go through the extra of doing it. And she just threw it in because she is amazing. And so having an amazing team, of course, which I think Greg talked about a little bit, he has business partners that works with him. It's so important and so key to your success. So, you know, my uh, merge, my, my VA in the Philippines just added timestamps. And the reason that I was so excited about it is because I'm now using simple podcast press for the player on the site. And in that, you can actually timestamp a particular place. And it's super easy to do, and it's super quick. So it, only, it took me five extra minutes, but I think it adds so much value to so you can go right where you want to go or right where the show notes are telling you, hey, this is an interesting part. This is another interesting part. Or, hey, if you want to listen here, you can do it. And I'm just excited about it, as you can tell. So definitely check that out. I'm going to be talking more about simple podcast pressed in the next episode. So definitely tune in for that. Cause we're going to go deep into what that product is. I'm talking to the creator of the product. You're going to find out how he did it and everything about it. So look forward to that. Definitely. Now getting onto a couple social media things, I wanted to know what you guys think about blab.im. So if you want to find me out there, it's blab.im slash Ross PR, of course, Go out there and find me, and you know if you ha- if you're on Blab, make sure that you follow me. I'll follow you back. 
so I can listen to and jump in some of your conversations. I think Blab for me and for a lot of people, the reason it's so addictive. And if you guys don't know what Blab is, Blab.im is a site where you can go and it's it's a lot like Periscope. It's live streaming video, but it's a conversation between, you know, four people. So you can just have one person broadcasting out and you don't have to bring anyone in if you if you don't want but as the moderator, you're able to bring in up to four people in the room into the conversation, which is pretty amazing. So you can have panel discussions, you can have group chats, you can do all kinds of things. And what it reminds me most is you go over a friend's house and you're sitting down for pizza and you end up just talking about politics or life or whatever for the next six hours. And before you know it, it's two o'clock in the morning and you have no idea how you spent this much time talking to this one person. Blab is like that and people just get stuck on it. So I heard that Carlos Gill actually <laughs> missed a flight because he was stuck on Blab and not like stuck there, but lost track of time talking on Blab. So, I mean, it's, it's addictive. It's amazing. Definitely something you guys should check out. If you want to learn more about Blab, I'm going to have some tips coming in an upcoming episode. Also, let me know what you guys are doing on Periscope and Meerkat and any other streaming platform that you're using video to grow your business. And yes, you can actually use video like live streaming to grow your business. It's amazing. There's a lot of stuff out there to do. The Social Strategy Podcast, of course, is sponsored by a lot of different companies. Currently, I'm not talking about any one sponsor, but there are a lot of things that I do for sponsorship dollars and to actually receive either affiliate commissions and stuff like that. Well, I've worked out a deal with Spreaker. It's exclusive to the podcast, so you can't actually get this anywhere else other than the social strategy podcast if you just go out to spreaker.com you enter the promo code vernon you can get any one of their pro accounts and that's anyone the one that's 19 bucks 49 bucks or 119 dollars for the station the radio station account you can get that 30 days an entire month basically on me for free zero dollars it's not going to cost you a thing that's across the board any pro account, which is amazing. You can save up to 119 bucks for 30 days on, I mean, it's, it's just amazing. So try it out. There's also a banner on the website. If you click on the banner, it's fine. Or if you just go out to vernonross.com forward slash Spreaker 30, it'll take you right there. The coupon code is automatically applied. So at any point in time, when you're ready to upgrade to pro, you should see that cost at zero. So make sure you go out there, check that out. 30 days free, any pro account on Spreaker. I thought that was a pretty amazing deal. I'm excited about it. All right, guys. And you know, with that, I really do appreciate you stopping by the podcast. Definitely make sure Go out, leave some ratings and reviews. I know I don't ask for those often, but I am asking for ratings and reviews. So we definitely need that. Just go out to vernonross.com forward slash review, and you can review the site right there. It's going to open up iTunes. If you're on an iPhone, it'll actually open the iPhone, you know, iTunes app, and you can leave a, a ratings and, and review and subscribe right there. I'm making it really easy for you. We love Spreaker, as you guys know. Definitely check them out. Also, check out Podbean. If you go out to Podbean, VR Podbean free, you'll get 30 days there too. I'm hooking you guys up with the podcast hosting. Go check it out. No reason not to get into podcasting. I am removing all barriers of entry, including cost, for you starting a podcast. Spreaker gives you an entire recording solution that you can just take with you. Podbean is really budget hosting, but it's quality. They've been around for 10 years. They're not going anywhere. I know the CEO. I know the communications director. They're solid. So either one of those, definitely check them out. Just make sure you use promo code Vernon for Spreaker. That's just my first name. Or VR, Podbean Free. If you go out to Podbean, use that promo code, and you're good to go. Guys, I really do appreciate the time. Keep tagging me on Instagram, letting me know where you are and where you're listening to the show. Follow me on Twitter at Ross PR. Email me your thoughts, concerns, feedback, and that's all I want in email. I don't want any of the other stuff. <laughs> anyway, definitely email me. Let me know what you guys think. I really do appreciate you guys listening to the show. Hey, Vernon Foster, thank you so much for that awesome rating and review. I don't shout people out nearly enough on the show so vernon foster thank you for that recent rating and review on itunes every last one of those helps 
the show get out to even more and more amazing people. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get out of here, and I will see you in the next episode. Yeah,